efficacy. Now, I got a question during the break in the last part of this, I'll mention it right now. What about recommending uh, over the counter in dietary supplements? It's completely legal and ethical to do that, but you have to also mention the standard uh, empirically validated medical treatments as well. Okay? There's one case, uh, case law where a chiropractor uh, got nailed for practicing medicine without a license by recommending only a dietary supplement and not letting the client know other options. Aside from the legalistic part of this, I think this is just the way to treat a fellow human being. You got a right to know. And, and I, you know, let's talk about pros and cons. And if you want to read, I like to have my patients read an article or something like that, uh, because you know, uh, you're, you're the one here who's calling the shots. One thing that cuts across all mental illnesses is a sense of, of powerlessness. And if we respect our patients and say it's your choice and give you the information, I think that that's an important thing to do. Okay, what can you talk about? Well, it's not only what you can talk about, but what I think we should talk about, okay? Uh, treatment options and recommendations, okay, we talked about that, uh, including the medications. Now, let, let me just say for a moment, uh, all different professions, therapists, we have, we have this belief that you should not practice out of the area of your competency. So if somebody is not really up on psychopharmacology, uh, then I think we say, this is something I don't feel uh, qualified to talk to you about, but here are a few of the issues I'd like you to discuss them with your doctor, okay? And so, okay, so that's, that's that. Uh, what to expect in terms of symptom improvement. Best example I can think of, 25% of people in the United States who lose a loved one within a year will have complicated bereavement where it collapses into full-blown major depression. 75% of people go through the agony of losing a loved one, but they don't get clinically depressed. And, and I think it's a marker of human resiliency, but there clearly are people who crash into major depression. And so if you're talking to a person, you're a therapist and the doctor's prescribing an antidepressant, and in fact, they really have major depression, okay, where antidepressants may be helpful. Uh, you know, I think it's important to say something like, if this medication works for you, if you tolerate it, we get the right dose. Here's a few things that, we, that I hope it will target and look at uh, social withdrawal, anhedonia, sleep disturbance, and so forth. But at the same time, to make it clear, and this may sound like we're stating the obvious, but for our clients, it's not necessarily the obvious. And hopefully, that can really be helpful to you in maybe a, a month or two into this. I'm hoping we'll see some, some results. At the same time, I want to be really clear and honest with you, and that is there is no pill around that's going to mend your broken heart or somehow speed up this process. I think that, I think that, that depression paralyzes people uh, who are, are grieving. They can't process the experience. And one thing about getting them out of the depression is get rid of these doggone depressive symptoms, but get the person back to a place where they can face the reality of this very painful loss. And here are the things it doesn't fix. Loneliness, you know, longing for the, de the, the lost loved one, and so forth. The time to response, that's a very big deal especially since almost all these medicines except stimulants and tranquilizers take weeks to work. And one of the most common reasons for dropping out of treatment, their, their primary care doctor almost certainly is saying, now, it's going to take a few weeks to start working. But you've got this 15-minute session, a person's in, going in to ask about depression. Maybe they've been you know, on the fence of feeling embarrassed or uneasy about going to see the doctor and talk about depression. And they walk out of there and they get their prescription. How many people do you think are going to really remember all the information that's given there? And you know, I don't remember information when I leave my doctor's office. So uh, that's going to be important. And talking about the time of response and talking about side effects. And we're going to talk clearly about side effect management and, and some things we do to really enhance treatment outcomes after a while. Now, there's a body of case law. And this is, this is where people have been accused of practicing medicine without a license. And it includes uh, a couple of chiropractors, uh, nurses, pharmacists, OK? and th psychotherapists. In every single case, when they only said this, they didn't say change your dose or, or anything like that, but they just laid this out, they were found completely not guilty. And in fact, in half the cases, the judge went beyond that and gave some version of this saying, and furthermore, if you hadn't shared this information, then maybe you're incompetent, because we have a duty to provide information to our patients so they can make wise choices. Okay, next piece here. Stress-induced brain damage 